the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. What a great pain it is in our heart to tell. Though Ephesians 4, 5 tells to us, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Men do not know what it is exactly. Men are still constantly indulging themselves to work unto the sinning attitude of their mind, iniquity upon iniquity, being the slave of sinners again and again, and men being not able to understand what it would mean to be exactly standing for the truth. The same principle what we can learn in the book of Isaiah chapter 22. When our Lord would utterly tell to them that this man have failed. This man have really failed to cleanse themselves. Therefore, in the year of the prophet, our Lord says, Until and unless I put them to death, this iniquity cannot be purged out. The same situation if it stands today in our lives. The sin that we are doing about the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly sculpting, grieving, and lying. How much great pain it would be in the hearts of our mind of Christ, in the vicar of Him, that this man constantly, though they have given the enlightened doctrine of the mind of Christ, they are not interested to learn, but rather they are constantly indulging themselves to go on, to tell on, and to practice iniquity upon iniquity, covering that iniquity with religion, with the methodology of teaching, not able to look upon doctrine anymore, but looking upon the stupefied, silly thoughts, which is no way interested for us to be taught again in the pulpits. Some of them, if they are religionally going out for human reformation, some of the pastor teachers who are standing in the pulpit, either in Roman Catholicism or in Protestantism, they want to lay down once again the basic fundamentals of Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, and they want to teach upon the dead works. It's of a very great pain, dear brethren, you believe it or not. Therefore, our Lord says, until and unless I purge them out. The process of purging them is to put them to death before such kind of a great anger of wrath of Lord could be manifested in our lives, better it would be that we change our ways and get back to the great glory of Jehovah. When we have been one Lord, when we have been having one faith, and when we have been having deepism into one Lord God, the Holy Spirit, into the great royal family of God at the moment of salvation, why they have to be children who have not yielded for maximum glorification for Christ. Why they have to be children who have died sin unto death? Why they have to be children who have disobeyed God's word? And our word of the Lord says in Colossians 2, against them it has been reserved who are disobedient to God's truth. The wrath of God has been still reserved. If there are unbelievers at one end, the believers who are walking reversionism is the other end. Dear brethren, think over these issues. I'm not telling that I have got the revolution, but rather I'm telling to you all because even you are capable of becoming MGG only when you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And why do you want to die a sinner to that? Think over this. We shall continue in the next step. Father, I'm grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, let us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. <laughs>